Hi, my name is Barry Crompton. Today I'm going to show you around our Jaguar E-Pace, then I'll take you for a ride in it. But first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a 2-litre D150 R-Dynamic HSE Auto. 2018 on a 68 plate, has done 24,302 miles. Fuel economy, urban, 43.5 miles per gallon. Extra urban, 55.4 miles per gallon. And combined is 50.4 miles per gallon. 0 to 60 time of 9 seconds. Top speed of 120 miles per hour out of a 4 cylinder, 148 brake horsepower, 16 valve engine. It's a bit of a stealth machine, finished in black. The only thing at the front that breaks it up is this uh, chrome trim around the grille there. We've got the R Dynamic badge in there and front parking sensors. The car will park itself both perpendicular and, and parallel. Um, I'll try and show you that later. Lovely looking car and great to drive. Multi-spoke alloys, dark silver and diamond cut, they, they look really good too. And the red Jaguar in the center, Jaguar HSE vents here. We've got the Jaguar side steps on them, power folding door mirrors. It's keyless lock, as long as you've got the key on you, just press the center there, little dimple in the handle, and it will lock, come back to the car, put your hand behind the handle, that's it, it it'll open. The full glass panoramic roof as well, great feature. It doesn't have rear privacy glass, and uh, I, I think they look so much better without that rear privacy glass. Integrated rear tailgate spoiler, rear wash wipe. Let's just have a look. Power open, power closed tailgate. Got the twin chrome exhaust tips uh, in the rear bumper there. Rear parking sensors. Got a reversing camera, I think. I'll just check that one and take it down. Plenty of room in the back there. It's got the hard rear load cover there that flips up. The other part of the load cover is actually attached to the tailgate, which is a good idea because it's, it's a real nuisance. When I have to put my camera bags in and put in the roller blind uh, forward, so if you're watching Range Rover, do that. That's, that's a good idea. It's also a nice flat load area and fairly low down if you've uh, got a dog or anything to put in the back there. Yeah, there's the reversing camera. I switched the car on and the heater. Um, I, I was photographing the car before, it's freezing up here. It's about minus two up here. And uh, I was outside photographing the car. And a, an old chap, one of the farmers up here, and I see him most days. Anyway, he took a fancy to the car, so he, he stopped. I must have been talking to him for about 15 minutes. When I was doing the outside, I, I had a hoodie on a body warmer and uh, an Oakley uh, skiing jacket <laughs> my teeth were chattering and he had, he had a t-shirt and a little fleece <laughs> and, and he was well he was even older than me I think so anyway it's the, the, the heat is nice and warm lovely in the back here usual problem with with kind of four-wheel drives these days or the, or the smaller four-wheel drives you've got to put the headrest up otherwise it's in the right in the middle of your back but probably made for, for children um you know a, a couple of the children in the back are, although if you pay any attention to tv these days it could be anybody we've got airbags in the a pillar airbags in the roof here roof here uh, you've got side seat air bags and uh, in the C pillar is a D pillar. I'm not sure about the D pillar. It's quite a sloping back. I, I think it's a pretty good looking car this to be fair. It's got the ivory leather seats. So nice and lovely contrast with the black. There we go. Two cup holders in the rear armrest and the Isofix rear child 
seat anchor points. Got it. Just take your ride. Gee whiz. <laughs> right, right, so that's the key. The, the Jaguar key. There we go. Get clear on this. When they called you after. Bluetooth audio, uh, an audio book there. Now, first thing to point out is we've got um, an engine management light on. Car's running fine. Um, I'll uh, sort that out when we get back. Shouldn't be too much of a problem, I don't think. Um, let me see. Right, what else? Car will park itself. I'll try and show you afterwards. Uh, we had a, a Range Rover Evoke yesterday, and that, that's got this assisted parking on as well. I've got about 40 minutes in these cameras in, in the batteries. I did the test drive, and then I went to the car park at Waitrose. And I'm not kidding. It was like Armageddon. Um, I, I put it, set it to uh, reverse into a parking space, narrow ways. And uh, just going in, and a woman walked behind me. Totally oblivious. I mean, I, I, I. Well, I just don't know. And then somebody else, who was looking for another spot, but not actually looking where they were going, nearly ran into me, straight into me. So I thought, oh, forget this for today. It's, it's obviously not my lucky day. So I'll try and do it with this, but I can't promise. But as I say, oh, if if you click this button here, the the park button. Actually, I'll just put that in park for a second. Click it in park, there you go. You've got park exit, so if you're in a tight spot, you can just click that in, it'll take you out of the parking spot. Perpendicular park, that's the narrow way in, and parallel is uh, the curbs there and you're reversing between two cars. That's more for a shopping uh, car park or something like that than the side of the road. So that's, that's uh, pretty good, that's a, a good feature. I say, I say it's a good feature. When I, uh, I, while I was trying to do it yesterday, these, these glasses have cameras in them. And I put, I started videoing with the glasses, and I'm not kidding, <laughs> me, it made you seasick, me, me head's going backwards and forwards, checking the mirrors and, and checking up on the car, so I, I think I was going to have a flipping heart attack. If, if I had to use it every day, I'd have a heart attack. Okay, I'll just show you how to use the assisted parking system in this 2018 Jaguar E-Pace. Um, so if I just click the park assist button there, it's showing there you've got parallel park, perpendicular park and park exit. That's looking for a space on the left. So if I just indicate right, it's now going to look for a space on the right. I put it in drive. It's telling me take care when manoeuvring. Drive to activate sensors. Perpendicular park, searching, press button by changing to auto, so I'm going forward. It's found a space, it's telling me to drive forward. So we'll go forward, I'm not touching the wheel. Stop and release wheel, well I've already released it. Select R and await next instruction. So into R, there you go, perpendicular part, reverse with care. So here we go, I'm just covering the brake, nothing else. And it's going so far. It's now telling me to select drive and wait. So we'll select drive. There we go. So it's taking me forward. Perpendicular park, stop, select R and await next instruction. Reverse with care. Again, just covering the brake.
Now, now I tell you what, stop and select R and wait. It's it's actually it's it got me in the parking space, then took me out again and got me exactly. There we go. Stop. It's finished. Exactly in the middle of the lines. That's pretty good. Um, the other thing, sat nav, the sat nav screen. That's the sat nav screen normally. Just turn the heater down. Actually. All oh, right. Don't remind me again. I, I don't want to know about that. All right. Now the my audio book is playing through my glasses. <laughs> You can take telephone calls on them as well and listen to music, whatever you want to do. So that, that's the sat-nav screen. On the dash here, just put my glasses on and get ready because I, I can't remember. It's just, it's so complicated. If you if you go on to, click on menu, you see in the centre there, you can find display. So display and then you click menu. Then you've got full map, full map. And there you go, you, so you've got your sat-nav right in the centre of the screen there, and, it, and it's a full screen. And at the bottom you've got digital miles per hour, which I prefer anyway, and uh, your fuel gauge and, and, and so on, and or even the, your parallel parking now, just try and knock that off. It's uh, not gone off, I'll put it in reverse. Right, so that park, park assist cancelled. You've got reversing camera there as well. Look at that, the, the, the full screen, I mean that's... Uh, that is quite handy, I've, I've got to admit. We've got heated front screen in here as well. Um, on the side there you'll see you've also got blind spot assist, which is an excellent, absolutely excellent uh, idea. It's quite a cheap accessory and it only needs to stop you from pulling out once and uh, it's paid for itself time and time again and uh, probably the motorcyclist that you would have knocked off anyway he'd give you the money for it if you asked him but it's a bit wild again up here i need to i need to take them off oh crikey i think i've forgotten I've forgotten my weekend hang on just go back lots of salt on the road as well so it's drying on the screen very very quickly I am um, service history 27th of 9 2021 at 20,904 miles Jardine Land Rover Reading and it's done 24,302 miles now we've also got memory three position electric memory seats and uh, electrical electrically adjusted <laughs> as I say it's uh, it's just gone it's just gone a bit miserable as well it was uh, back I don't know what, uh, something in my uh, in the back there, all my camera gear. Just gone a bit miserable at the moment. It's just started to rain. Fortunately, I <laughs> I did the outside. But again, uh, apologies for the outside because it's not as clean. Uh, you can see what it's like coming up here. There's lots of spray on the road, lots of salt spray, and uh, of course it's farming country, so there's lots of other spray. <laughs> it's not very nice. Um, the car's pretty mint. Would when Lance has finished with this, it'll look a million dollars. It's just as it's come in. It's not being polished outside. It's not being cleaned inside. The seats would benefit from a wipe over. They are uh, very pale, They're ivory leather, I think they are, and uh, they'll they'll come out up like new. Jag seats, Jag interiors are just kind of second to none. Um, nice, nice and simple. The grab handle there for the, the the passenger. I think it just makes it look. 
it doesn't have the symmetry I, I particularly like but having said that you've got a steering wheel on this side so what do I know Jaguar are, are brilliant I, I do I do think they run so good you've also got just here your different driving modes if you click that back that goes into dynamic need to put my glasses on again to show you this so if you click that back there you go dynamic click it forward comfort eco rain ice and snow but if you if you put it in dynamic it gets angry and everything goes red I need to knock that off now I need to knock the display off just get around here click OK and that's why you have to concentrate on the country knock the full map off and that's it that's the angry red dynamic dashboard um, and if I just knock it forward that goes to the ordinary one and then there you go now I, I quite I quite like the look of that one that's got a nice nice green circles around which I for some reason I associate Jaguar with green so it's, it's a nice display it's uh, I did have an XJR um, an XJ6 um, shape with a flared wheel arches and uh, I had that for a very short while I, I, I bought it to use myself and I put it on the internet Auto Trader as it was then you used to have to take photos as well it wasn't just digital it would come out in the magazine and uh, the, the phone literally melted um, and I think I sold it the first day I got it so, got the front central armrest here. Here's quite a good finish. I don't like cup holders that come in very handy, especially for me. But I don't like to see two holes in the centre console. But if you flip that on, you can take that out, that, that little panel. And then underneath there, you've got uh, that. I've just spotted the uh, what what that noise was before. The locking wheel nut is in there. So that's what it was rolling about. Actually, just put it in dynamic. Dynamic there, and then. I still wouldn't say it's particularly fast, but it's fast enough for me. And making these sporty style 4x4s or SUVs, um, you're trying to make them into something that they're not really. I mean, they're handy every so often, but a four-wheel drive SUV type up off the road is... For comfort, I would say, and, and for for getting places in inclement weather, or if you live out in the country, they're made to go over bumps, and and you know why would you want why would you want a sporty drive? I I, I don't know, um, unless you're a yuppie and you live in a farmhouse, but commute to work somewhere. Who knows? I don't know. But I always think if you try and make something that does two two jobs, it doesn't do either properly. Like you know, Range Rovers, they, they do exactly what they should do, perfectly. And and I just I just don't like it in dynamic. I like it in comfort. That's what Jaguar is. 
I was listening to an audio book on the way up and uh, there's a guy doing a woman's voice. <laughs> He's doing the male voice and the woman's voice. And <laughs> I, I, I've, I've never ever heard a woman talk like, like that or, or sound like that. Such wood. Again, I'm trying to do two things. It's, it's not right. This, this, this is a lovely car. In comfort, especially. I'll put it in eco, but eco just usually drains the last bit of enjoyment out of a drive. What's it doing? Oh yeah. Let's, let me just try that again. So we're. We're just tootling along, it's in, in eco. Put my foot down. It takes a little bit to, to respond. I don't like eco. Back to comfort. It's quite a nice display. Some switches here for your front and rear windscreen, automatic um, for climate control. You can also knock the gear lever across like so, change up by pulling towards you, down by pressing away. But again, you just have it in drive. If you wanted to change gear, you've got paddles on the steering wheel here. There you go, knock down. And you can set um, you, you can set the paddles in the information in, in the, the settings. So the paddles only work when it's in sport, but uh, I put them to work all the time. Also, another thing, you'll see there's a GoPro up here and you can also set, which is quite a good idea, um, especially if you're leaving the car and it's a, a, a red hot day, they don't make stuff easy. And with the blind coming forward automatically when you switch the engine off, I didn't want it to do it, so I was trying to find out how to switch it, how to stop it. Anyway, if you go into settings, you see there home settings, all settings, audio settings. So there's nothing there. So I've got to knock that off, click climate, then go into settings. Then you've got climate settings there, click climate settings, and then you've got auto airflow, auto sunroof blind, off and on. So you can knock it off there. But also, there's auto airflow, and uh, you can you can knock, you can set how fast the fan goes, which uh, you know it it really is all stuff that doesn't or shouldn't really be in a car. I mean, I'm out here. There's nobody on the the road except them sheep, and. There's all this. There's all you can't pick your phone up, but you can mess about with all that business. It, it's it's just not doesn't seem right to me. Anyway, apart from that, you've got lovely sport seats, nice and comfortable. The front centre armrest. Oh, you, you've also got lane departure warning down there, which I've turned off. Um, which is stupid. Got cruise control and speed limiter here. The cruise control is, is pretty good, I have to say, because there's nothing worse than, than driving along the road with your cruise control on and then somebody pulls out and you, you, you brake and it knocks your cruise control off and so on. So cruise control, if I set the cruise like, like so, that's on and I can change the distance I want to stay from the car in front. The car is actually speeding up at the moment, but if there's a car in front and one pulled out, it would keep you that exact distance. It would brake you, slow you down, and, and also stop you if the car in front stopped. So that's, uh, that's a good feature. Too dark and uh, misty, for, even for me to have sunglasses on. 
So look, looks lovely car from the outside with the Jaguar side steps on as well that finishes it off really we've got a nice warning out here that's on the dash the instrument display left hand side we've got speedo in the center of the speedo there is a digital speedo so it's analog on the outside with a needle although it's a an LED dash or TFT dash whatever you want to call it um, in the center is the digital readout the speedo so no ambiguity it's telling you exactly how many miles an hour you're doing at the moment it's saying 29 below the digital speedo readout there's traffic signal recognition so it tells you how fast you can go on that particular road which I always find very very handy especially when you're approaching a speed camera in the center you can set it for different things to, to show different stuff from this button here at the moment it's showing my journey fuel economy how many miles I've left to go before um, I have to fill up and this chap's slowing down as he stopped for me or as he stopped in the no he stopped in the perfect place Skoda driver we do always Skodas very very good cars it's showing me how many miles I've done on this trip and my average speed and then on the right hand side you've got rev counter it's showing me that um, auto stop start is off And in the centre of that, what gear I'm in, at the moment, drive's just selected. Got your indicators on the left here. It's also your headlights, auto headlights, which is a great idea. And... Uh, Wipers on the right, rear wash wipe. On the left here, your voice activation, telephone controls, mode so you can switch channels and so on, and from radio to Bluetooth. It's Bluetooth hands free. I click home there. We can have the map on, which could comes in handy nice dashboard contrast stitching Jaguar make cars very very well especially the inside Nice driving position. And uh, just a lovely car, as I say, if I've got enough battery life, I will try and demonstrate the, if I've got enough <laughs> battery life and there's no pedestrians trying to commit suicide behind me, when, I'm, when it's parking, I shall try and demonstrate the parking system but they not all do parallel and perpendicular and to be honest I, I find the perpendicular parking would be better on, on you know on, on car parks the only trouble is these days that they're so narrow you think great I can get in that really narrow space and, and then you, you come back to your car and somebody's opened the door into the, the dinged it or scuffed it so you're far better off probably <laughs> Not doing a great job of selling this automatic parking here, but 
you, you're far better off. Oof. You're far better off just finding a parking space way away from anybody else and parking there. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.